All right, everyone, I'm going to show you here. It's me. I'm going to show you how to work the uh, invisible tape for this particular lab. So I have you get any kind of brand of transparent tape, gift wrapping tape, scotch tape, and you're going to be peeling pieces of tape that are about yay long. Um, you know, that's six inches, 10 centimeters, something, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's some consistent length that you can kind of handle. The most important thing you're gonna do with this piece of tape is to always fold over a handle. And the way that looks is to take, uh, I'll try to orient it the right way for you, take the end of the tape, fold it over on itself, like so, so that you've got this non-sticky part right here that I can you know, just move around. I can grab on, I'm not gonna get stuck to it. What this allows you to do is to put it on a table or a desk or a notebook um, without getting stuck there forever. So I'm gonna put it on the table right here next to my notebook. Now it's invisible, <laughs> so you can't see it really well. But um, I might just put this little note right here that says, um, uh, lower hello W right there can't see that yeah I wrote right here low now the thing you're going to continually do with your pieces of tape is peel them fold over handles and you piggyback them. You'll understand why in a second. I'm not totally confident that my mark there will stay. I'll label this one up. You can call them A and B, up and down, upper and lower, whatever. I just find it useful to keep track of which one is which. And what you do with these pieces of tape, you can make as many piggybacked pairs as you want. In fact, you might want to have some extras. But if I grab the bottom of these, this pair, like so, now I've got them both in one pull. So I'm going to kind of smooth them out. I think smoothing them out is important. It, if there's anything that's happened between here and the table, that kind of gets rid of it. And then the main thrust of your experiment here is to peel them apart vigorously but not violently. So it sounds and looks something like this. Okay, And then you'll notice once you've peeled them apart, these are pretty good, there's a certain interaction that takes place between the upper and the lower. Now you could have a whole bunch of these. I might take my low piece, <laughs> see if I can just put it somewhere else. It's probably not going to work too well. It's not in the field of view. Anyway, it's right there. I can still attract it with my other piece. Um, but it, you can kind of hang these on a line or on a stick or on the edge of a table or something like that. So you can make multiple pairs. And the idea is you want to see if your upper and lower interactions work just with these two or do they work with you know, an upper piece from here and a lower piece from another pair or an upper piece and another upper piece from a different pair, or two lower pieces, and you get the idea. What are the combinations that you can look to, um, what kind of interactions do different combinations of pieces of tape that have been piggybacked, what do they have? What can you observe? What patterns do you see? And that's the main thrust of this first part of the lab, is to see um, what those interactions are and how consistent are they. Um, whenever you you get them stuck to your hand or it, the, the effect seems to run out, you can always redo your piggybacking. Smooth them out, peel them again, and, uh, oops, I messed that one up. I messed up my piggyback. There it is. go. No, it still works. Okay, 
So play with that, play with different combinations, have multiple piggyback. If you've got other people in your home and you're doing this, other people can be peeling their pieces of tape and you can just kind of hold them out to each other. Um, this is a family fun filled evening right here. Okay, I'll have more video to kind of give you a next step, but that's gonna give you a good idea.